This is a review of the book Shaman about cave man. There's the writer of the book. Robinson has chosen a broad and effective means for including everything that he knows and everything he imagines about the world of 30,000 BC. It was a crucial period in the establishment of human society, when Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon lived in an uneasy sort of coexistence, and Robinson presents it in the tried and true narrative form we think of as the novel of education. An adolescent Robinson calls him Loon who has been orphaned and taken under the wing of his tribe's shaman and his wife, hits the road and discovers all he needs to know in order to survive. Well, of course there's no road only a few paths into the deeper wilderness that surrounds the wilderness where the clan already lives. Loon sets out on one of these, into the greater forest on an initiation resembling an aboriginal walkabout these people think of it as a wander naked, weaponless, and without means for making fire, for a good number of days. As Loon comes of age as a hunter and a man, makes his kills and takes a wife, the endless round of days and seasons assume a palpable urgency, just when it seems as though the boy become adult will triumph over natural adversity, a party of northers, a separate people who live mostly in snow and ice and have trained wolves to help them track and hunt, kidnap his wife. The perilous trek to find and reclaim Loon's wife makes up only part of this gorgeous book that like the best of its kind gives you a feel for a life we might dream about but will never otherwise know. It's rich with the sense of natural forces ruling beyond the visible, with bridges to the world of the departed, and a deep and abiding feeling of life powerfully fixed in earth, water, sky, and air, while at the same time attuned to changes in the seasons. It's a connection that these days we no longer feel much of but Robinson brings it vividly alive, as when on the verge of spring the ice of winter begins to melt, so that upstream and downstream the river was groaning, crying out for release, for the chance to run free and see the sun again. Big jagged plates were rising out of the shattered patches of river ice, as if something underneath was pushing to be free. The sight of this pushes Thorn the shaman to push Loon in turn to say the appropriate poem in, in which knowledge of the changing of the seasons is transmitted from year to year and beyond. Great salt sea deep trail of the dead, Loon recites as the river unlocks before his and our eyes. We burn holly for you to break the ice. As you can hear, Robinson keeps stylization of the language to a minimum, with In a lot of ways, the people 30,000 years ago were just like us. They were a high-tech culture. Their uh, personal kit would have included about 60 different substances, skillfully assembled. And the Iceman had a fanny pack, and in the fanny pack were all of the elements of the Swiss Army knife disassembled and in their constituent parts all except for the corkscrew. But uh, they were modern also in their language. And the way that they were different from us is that they didn't know uh, as much about the world as we do now. And they were lacking in one really crucial technology that has changed our consciousness, which is writing. And that was something I had to come to terms with. This was an oral culture. They didn't have any texts to read or to uh, study. So their culture, which was stable over 20,000 years, a hard uh, concept to come to terms with when you think about it, was transferred by word of mouth from uh, the older people to the younger people, even though they were only living on average about 40 years. So this was a, a huge difference that I, I had to try to express in the book. And, and it's really something that the book is about, that difference. So you have to imagine them being just like us. Genetically, they're just like us, except they didn't have lactose tolerance. And other than that, their DNA is exactly like ours. But they didn't have writing, so they thought differently. They, they imagined the world differently.